So we're gonna go ahead and correct some of the issues we saw here. One, we're gonna adjust our tag so we have the ability to set tags specific to each instance when we reuse the EC2 module. So for example, I would love to name one of them web and one of them worker. Two, I want to make sure we have the ability to not add an elastic IP address to a server if we don't want one. And then we are going to work on sorting out the issue of security groups. Right now they have the default security group and they cannot accept traffic from any location unless the source is from a location that also is assigned the security group. So we basically can't use these servers right now as it is. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm gonna tackle the tags issue first. We'll head on over here. And ideally what I would love to do is have a variable here inside of our module definition for this EC2 module when we're using the EC2 module to give it some tags to run. So I'd love to say something like this, tags equals this, and I'm gonna give it a map of tags. So for example, I want the name tag to equal something. So if we go on into our EC2 module, we'll see we actually hard code a name tag here. And this is the EIP, I think, right? So let's go up to the server itself. And this is the name that we give it. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste that here. And var infra env actually works because that is a variable that is defined in this file already. And what I'd love to do is just say it's the name web for this module, EC2 app. And then we can go down to our worker one, which uses the EC2 module as well and paste that in and I'll call that worker. Okay, so how do we make this work? Inside of our EC2 module, we need to add a new variable here. And that variable is gonna be called tags. It's gonna be a type of map of strings, which is what a, a tag definition is. We'll give it a default value of an empty map and a description is tags for the EC2 instance. Okay, so what are we gonna do here next? If I head over to Safari, we're gonna see a page exists about resource tagging. And you can see that it just has general information about tags. If you scroll down here, there is an example of merging some default tags with additional tags. Right here, they have a variable, additional tags, which is a map. And you can give your module additional tags to add to the tags that are applied to the resource in addition to some default ones. So we're gonna use a similar thing here with the merge function. Now, one thing I don't like about this example is that they put the additional tags variable first as the first parameter to the merge function. If we head over to the docs on merge, it'll say if more than one given map or object defines the same key or attribute than the one that is later in the argument sequences takes precedence. So this is very much similar to other coding languages like PHP's array merge. The ones that are merged in later take precedence over the ones that are added in first. Let's go ahead and see what I'm talking about there. Inside of our EC2 module in the main function, we have tags here for the AWS instance. And what I wanna do here is have some defaults that get merged in with the uh, additional ones that we add. And I want the additional ones that we add to overwrite anything that has the same key here. So let's go ahead and use the merge function. And the first thing we're gonna pass to the merge function is this map of tags. And the second thing we're gonna add is var.tags. So the items in var.tags, let's just indent this, the items in var.tags are gonna overwrite anything in here if they have the same key. And if they don't have the same key, then they just get merged up. Okay, so let's go back over to Cloudcast here and name here should not be in quotes. Okay, so name equals this string. And this one will be worker. Up here is going to be web. Let's go ahead and run Terraform plan and see if I've messed anything up. Okay, two to change and zero to destroy. Um, two things to note here. So first and foremost, this is our EC2 worker and it's gonna have its tag updated from web to worker, that's great. Up here, it's gonna have their tag changed from staging to web. Or in fact, it's not gonna be changed at all, right? Because this already had web, so this one doesn't change. Um, the other thing to see here is that this actually doesn't like the change in security group IDs. The first time we created this stuff, we did not get any uh, change in here. It just applied a default security group. But if we run Terraform apply right now, it's actually gonna think that we're taking away that one security group. And then it's gonna complain and give us errors about the fact that it can't have no security group. We'll see that in a minute and just what to do to fix that. Okay, so one more note about tags. We could add anything we want for any of these tags and those will get applied to those instances as well. So we have this neat ability to use the merge function, which in our case gives us the ability to have some default set of tags 
and uh, merge it in with our own define tag so we can define on the fly. And for here, I'm actually going to make the defaults not web or worker, just have nothing there. So that'll be the default. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to adjust after updating the tags is the use of the elastic IP address. So what I really ideally would like to say here is I want a variable create EIP, and that can be a Boolean, right? So true is what I want for EC2 app. And down here for worker, I want that to be false. So just like before, we're going to make this work. So we need create EIP to be a variable defined here. Variable create EIP. Type is a bool. Default is false description, whether to create an EIP for the EC2 instance or not. Okay, so how do we make this work now? We're going to use something I mentioned previously just briefly, and we're going to use a count. So we can say here count for EIP equals one or zero or 67, anything. There's a count, and for each uh, item here, for the number of counts, it's going to generate an elastic IP address. We want either zero or one in our case. So what we're gonna do is a ternary operator. So we're gonna say var.createIP. So if we create an IP address, then create one, else create zero. And we're gonna copy and paste this. And we're gonna go ahead and bring that down here as well to the EIP association, because we want that to be the same thing. Either associate the elastic IP address we created or don't because we did not create an elastic IP address in that case. So it's totally valid to have a count of zero in Terraform. And that's especially nice for this use case. Okay. So if create EIP is true, it's going to create an elastic P address and the association, else it will not. Now, this changes a few things. In our outputs here, one of the outputs is the elastic IP address. And in the notation to do output here, if you use count, is to return a list of all of the things you're returning. So cloudcast address dot star dot public IP is going to return a list of all of the public IP addresses that it creates. In our case, it's zero or one, but in other cases, it might be like two or six or 60 of them, whatever. So for those use cases, this is the notation to return the list of public IP addresses created. And you refer to them in kind of an array notation. So for example, you might say module.ec2.appEIP2 for the second in the index there, something like that. Back here in main, I don't think we need to do that anywhere here. Oh, we do. Okay, so the allocation IP address here. So um, for our EIP named cloud class address, we create either one or zero and we're using count. And because we're using count, we need to refer to this using that array access notation to create the first item in that list, just because we use count, whether it's one or zero or more. So this will make this work because we all know we're only creating one or zero. We're only going to get down this far if we created one elastic IP address, because otherwise it does nothing because the count is zero. And we know it'll always be the first item in the list of Cloudcast addresses of the EIPs we created. Okay, let's go ahead and see if I made any mistakes here that it is going to yell at me about when we plan it. So instance cannot be destroyed. Cloudcast address blah, 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 has a lifecycle primit destroyed. But this plan calls for the resource to be destroyed, which is interesting. So when we have a count here and we changed it, it actually needs that to uh, be destroyed and recreate it. I'm going to go ahead and actually let that happen here because that IP address doesn't uh, matter in our case. But that might be an edge case that you hit that might suck. You might actually not want that IP address to get destroyed. Um, there is stuff to work around for that, but I'm not going to go into that right now. OK, so two to change. Once again, the security group. Um, and then we have names of the worker with the tag, like we said, and two to destroy and two to change. So this is going to replace the elastic IP address totally. It's going to uh, create and then destroy it because um, Oh, I know why. I'm actually a little bit wrong in my description there. The reason why we need prevent destroy here to be uncommented is because it actually does need to kill, destroy one of the elastic IP addresses, but not both. It's going to keep the one for the server in the public subnet, and it's going to destroy the one on the worker server because up here we said don't create an elastic IP address for the worker server. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let it do that. I'm actually going to go ahead and apply this now, and this is going to uh, partially succeed. The reason it's going to fail, I believe, is because uh, VPC-based instances require at least one security group. So it didn't like that. Um, it thinks we're taking away a security group and we're updating our existing resources, even though it let us create them with no security group. So let's just go ahead and do a workaround here. I'm going to just grab this security group that it used before. And we're going to add that into our list of security groups. 
for now because I don't want to deal with that in this video. Okay, so that is done. What I want to do here is head to uh, EC2 main, give us our prevent destroy back, and let's check out the browser to see what happened here. In our account here, I'll refresh. Now we have one named worker. The one in worker, if I head to details and instance summary, we'll see it is in the uh, private subnet, still perfect. It has no public IP address. The one named web is correctly named web, has a public IP address, and is in the public subnet, great. And these are both in that default security group. And the security group, once again, is only allowing inbound traffic from other resources that are also in that security group. So it's essentially useless to us from the outside world. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and try to resolve that.